Joining me now is Douglas Herbert, our International Affairs Editor. Yeah. Doug, so before these talks even get underway, these attacks don't bode well, do they? It is an extremely inauspicious uh, climate for these talks to be to be taking place. But it's one that I have to say that uh, Russia is obviously sending a big message. Ever since Moscow pulled out of this grain deal that you just mentioned uh, in July, mid-July, a deal which by, in the opinion of most international observers and food experts say, was working pretty well. Ever since Russia pulled out, it has been stepping up the frequency of its attacks, drone attacks and others, on Ukrainian ports. And when I'm talking about Ukrainian grain exporting ports, Annette, and grain silos, the infrastructure, the facilities, I'm not just talking about Odessa, the biggest of the ports there, and a couple of other ports immediately on the Black Ukraine's Black Sea coast. But further down, and this is where it's significant, what we're reporting on right here, on the Danube River. Uh, Ukraine has been using the Danube, which is obviously the tributary, which runs through a number of countries, beginning in Germany, the Black Forest area, and spills into the, uh, the Black Sea. And it hugs Romania. And this is why it's significant. Let's bring up a quick map here to show where these latest drone attacks uh, were on, on this port were coming. Can we bring up the map? Yeah. What this is showing, and, and this map is very homed in on a specific area. Yes, to the right off the map is Odessa and some of those ports. What you're seeing there, though, is Ismail is the latest grain exporting port. It is a port that uh, Ukraine more and more relied on as an alternative route for getting its grain ships out in the face of this Russian interdiction military ban since July, and also for getting fuel. It was a very important, and it's part of Ukraine. I know it's right there next to Romania. It's a, a, a couple of uh, kilometers away, and this is what makes it so dangerous, Annette. This is why this headline on our screen should raise eyebrows, because even this morning, just before I came on set, you had reports that Ukraine was saying that some of those drones fell in Romanian territory. Significant, obviously, because Romania is a NATO member. Romania's defense ministry trying to now tamp this down, minimize it. They don't want this to, uh, to you know, flare up into some international incident, um, saying that there was no military direct threat from this drone attack on Ismail to Romania or its territory, trying to keep NATO out of this. But you could see where there is uh, the, the potential for escalation, both rhetorical and military, and why this is all so dangerous. Right so what exactly does Russia want, Doug? Russia wants what uh, the international community doesn't want and what Ukraine doesn't want and what most international food experts say is best for the Middle East, Africa, um, and, and Asia, the countries that most need this food. What Russia wants is to impose an alternative plan, a plan which effectively, and this is not explicitly stated by Russia, but implicitly a plan that would lock out Ukraine, give no option for Ukraine to export its own grain. Because remember, it's both Russia and Ukraine are big grain exporters, cereal exporters. In addition, Russia also does fertilizer exports. Russia's gripe is that the West never lived up to its side of the deal when it started this Black Sea Grain Initiative, which was to help Russia export its own grain and fertilizers. Uh, the fact of the matter, Annette, is that the sanctions never forbid Russia from grain and fertilizer exports. What they have done is it's obviously been harder for international bankers, international shippers, insurers to work with Russia. They're less willing to do so, helping it to export. So Russia's complaint there is legitimate, but you could also say Russia's brought it on itself by invading Ukraine. Yes, there are sanctions on Russia, and for a reason. What Russia's plan would do is essentially, what I suspect's gonna happen at these talks, is Russia's gonna come with a long list of demands. It's already said it has that. It is not gonna accept promises from the West. It wants concrete guarantees, as its foreign minister has put it in the past few days, guarantees that Russia will be able to export its grain. That might involve uh, exporting a million tons of grain to Turkey. This is one scheme uh, right now under consideration with financial support from Qatar. Don't ask me how that will work, Annette. Uh, but what we don't see in this equation is Ukraine being able to revive its own exports. It's not going to look like the former Black Sea grain deal. Whatever emerges from today's talks, expect something much more on Russia's terms. Doug Herbert, thanks for that.